Hey guys, welcome back to the Cool Classic Kids Show, and today we're talking about, well, Saints Row, Volition, Deep Silver. Volition had recently just been shut down by Embracer Group a few months back, and well, we don't have really any answers. There's no closure to this situation. They had made Saints Row 2022 after making what Agents of Mayhem, Saints Row 4, all these games be just further spirals down a toilet for the Saints Row franchise. And Longtime fans, we we don't know what happened. We don't know how it got to this point. We're, we need some closure. We need some answers. At least that's how I feel. Um, you know, I played Saints Row since the first one. I love one and two. Three was pretty decent. Um, four is one of those things where I tried for a while to convince myself, eh, it's not so bad. It's bad. It's bad. Didn't bother with Agents of Mayhem. Um, and didn't also bother with Saints Row 2022. It's just a further spiral with each release you know, having after three. And so what happened? Uh, you know, I have to wonder. We didn't get any real answers here, just more questions. And while, you know, we were definitely like, well, you get what you fucking deserve when Volition announced its shutdown. I mean, it's sad that it had to come to that. But um, there's a video that has come out recently, and that video is from Mr. Saints Godzilla 21 that seems to give answers. And while I don't know the level of validity to what they're saying, there's still, you know, an interesting, uh, definitely some interesting things that he brings up in the video. So we're going to watch that video. I will link his video in the description below if you'd like to watch it for yourself. But yeah, guys, let's jump right into it to see, well, what this individual has to say about what happened. Okay, so Mr. Saints Godzilla 21's video is titled Volition's Closure and the Future of Saints Row. Well, we all know the news already. Back in August, it was revealed in a LinkedIn post by Volition that the studio was being shut down. Quote, this past June, Embracer Group announced a restructuring program to strengthen Embracer and maintain its position as a leader in the video game industry. As part of that program, they've evaluated strategic and operational goals and made the difficult decision to close Volition effective immediately. It's crazy because Embracer Group made all of these acquisitions and now it seems like their company is kind of falling apart. They absorbed more than they can handle, at least the general uh, the general look at all these, you know, res this restructuring going on. Multiple studios are now being closed. It's, it's pretty bad for Embracer Group right now. And they're really they're really effing up uh, the games industry by having made all these acquisitions and not being able to deal with them and yeah that's it just a month after celebrating their 30th anniversary the studio was shut down in the blink of an eye honestly considering everything that's happened this news still came as a shock i mean i wouldn't have been surprised if this news came off the heels of the reboots release but a year later to me personally i wasn't shocked at all i mean when you look at volition as a company like i had said earlier they had three garbage games saints row 4 agents of mayhem saints row 2022 I mean, how many more attempts should a developer have? I mean, you know, it sucks that at the end of the day, people lost their jobs. Um, you know, we lost a long time uh, development studio you know, having gone under. There's a lot of history there. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, you have to make good games first and foremost. Um, and even more so, it, it's, it's, it goes beyond that. You have to make actually, you know, commercially viable video games. But in the end, you do have to make good video games. And the last three... Volition made were not at all good, sad to say. Later, and after Volition became a subsidiary under Gearbox? Man. And I know a lot of people have pointed to the reboot as the sole reason for the studio's closure, but that isn't exactly the case. See, as it turns out, Embracer Group is a quite incompetent company. They would go and buy up every possible studio under the sun without considering the budget needed to keep all their new assets running. So to make up for this negligence, they reached out to Saudi Arabia's Savi Games Group to make a deal to receive a $2 billion investment. However, this deal fell through back in May, leading to Embracer's frantic restructure and the demise of Volition. That sucks. The fact that they're desperate for money at this point in order to... And they have the talent. They just need the money to get this talent to put out video games so that they can start to make money. And Embracer Group put themselves in such a garbage situation from this. So enjoy, um, enjoy the games. She 
Of course, you could argue that the reboot was a larger success, the studio would have been less likely to be axed. But was the reboot truly a financial failure? According to Embracer, despite the game not meeting their quality standards, it did financially perform in line with management expectations. Now that could honestly mean anything since the sale figures were never publicly shared and attempting to research those numbers can be quite confusing. From what I was personally told, the reboot's launch performed just behind the sales of Saints Row the Third. Keep in mind that the third was the best earning game in the series, with four times the pre-orders of Saints Row 2 and selling 5.5 million copies in a year. The bigger concern at the time was the sales following the game's release. Quote, the real question now is if we'll sell the same as other Saints Row games. We've always had a weak launch with a long tail. If that doesn't hold, then it'll be a lot more scary six months out. After those six months, I was told the game was doing just okay. Nothing great, but nothing worrisome either. So the game did perform well enough. What kept it from being more... But well enough by what standard, you know? It's interesting. I wish that there was numbers here, but if it did, you know, perform lesser than, than Saints Row 3, I mean... By, you know, 10 years ago standards versus now, it's a, you know, whole different ball game. But, I mean, maybe the game did relatively well, or at least within reason. And uh, it seems like Embracer was dealing with a lot more anyway. Even And that's giving Saints Row 2022 the benefit of the doubt. Likely the game just really didn't do well. It probably had no legs. I mean, especially especially when a game comes out. It's broken upon release. It looks like crap. It runs like crap. This story is crap. There's not really much redeeming quality there. So to think that, oh, this game did relatively well. I mean, yeah, maybe by 15 years ago standards, but uh, by modern standards and, and given doesn't didn't really have any any positive about it other than you can maybe run around a little bit and blow stuff up. Oh, my gosh. Like most other sandbox games nowadays, but. Yeah, giving it the benefit of the doubt, perhaps it did relatively well, but e even so, man. Um, yeah, it seems like Embracer just bit off more than they could chew with their development, all their acquisitions. More positive was the ballooning $100 million budget from the troubled development. So I genuinely don't believe the reboot was the primary reason for Volition's fate. Besides, Embracer... Oh my god, it's so crazy to think that they put so much money to make this game, and what they got out of it was what it was disgusting racer wouldn't have gone through the effort of moving volition on her gearbox if it was always their intent to close the studio embracer was simply so desperate to cut cost and still it are you fucking kidding me fuck you embracer fuck you <sighs> in all likelihood volition was just a cost. and so you're showing off that they uh, closed another studio absolutely pathetic man on embracer's part Most effective choice since they'd yet to start development on a new title we know from Volition's previous video editor, Josh Stinson, that the studio was closed while they were still in the pitch phase for a new game. We can only wonder now what those ideas could have been. And I know the question a lot of you are probably thinking, what does this mean for the future of Saints Row? Well, it was revealed in a Discord AMA that the IP would remain with Volition's previous publisher, Deep Silver. So it's up to them if they want to continue the series, and from what I've heard, they're still fairly interested. I even heard rumors a while back that the publisher was looking to outsource a new Saints Row back to Volition since they already had the tools and foundation set to make a sequel. Though, since they're now shut down, that means Deep Silver would have to find another studio if they wish to continue the franchise. Oh my god, guys. What's sad is that if Saints Row 2022 did happen to do reasonably well enough, Deep Silver could consider doing a sequel to Saints Row 2022. I will slam my head on my desk. Oh my god. That is crazy to think that there is still a possibility that they may continue to cut their own nose to spite their face. The fact that a sequel to this garbage attempt at a Saints Row game is possible does, definitely does not sit right with me. Definitely does not. And since whoever they find would have to start from scratch, the earliest they could see a new game coming is four years, if at all. Now, I know the true number one burning question you're all thinking. What about the Saints Row movie? Nah, I'm just kidding. I'm pretty sure that I- Yeah, I'm super good on all that. <laughs> super good, bro. Keep that nonsense. Idea quietly died two years ago. <laughs> huh. Anyway, as for the fate of the Saints Row 2 PC patch, I wish I had a definitive answer. I know people close to the project want to keep it alive, but ultimately, it's up to the higher-ups at Deep Silver. It's sad, the fact that Saints Row 2 is not playable on PC. Like, you could buy the game, but it doesn't work. 
So I, I never actually bought it on PC. I played it on a little bit on my Xbox One. Um, excuse me, my Xbox Series X. But yeah, it's sad that there's just no answer to Saints Row uh, being playable on, on PC. Over. Prior to Volition's closure, I was told the publisher is in deliberation on whether or not to finish the patch. And if, if Embracer wants to earn a lot of love, they will make sure a Saints Row 2 patch happens. For real. Like, honestly, they, that would, you know, even if they bump the price up of that game to like $20, $25, whatever, I will pay for it. I will buy it. Just patch the game. Patch the game and raise the price up to at least to help you guys, okay? Just do it. Just do it, okay? And what the budget would be if they decided to do so. Now chances are even more slim unless they can contract the X-Volition devs needed to help finish the project. It's just a damn shame. The development hell the patch has gone through deserves its own hour-long video, but above everything, the idea that Mike Watson's hard work might go to waste, it just pisses me off. Like Flippy, I too was a part of the patch team, testing new builds and reporting glitches. We saw firsthand just how much passion Mike had for the game, the community, and how much he wanted everyone to enjoy Saints Row 2 as intended. He continuously worked on the project up till two weeks before his passing, only stopping when he physically couldn't continue. So I pray, I pray Deep Silver decides to put forward the resources needed to finish it. If not for Mike's sake, at the very least to regain some goodwill from the community. Facts. Yeah, it sucks that... Man, game preservation, guys. Game preservation. The industry needs to take it more seriously. The fact that one of the best games of, of you know, what, 7th gen is not even playable on PC is sad. And there's plenty more. There's tons and tons of games that we will not, we may not see in the future. And it's sad to, to consider that. But game preservation, man, the industry needs to take it more seriously. Finally, there's just a few things I'd like to say about Volition and clear up a few misconceptions. For one, I know a lot of people's feelings with the studio changed after their comments on Twitter. More specifically, the notorious haters get a hate fiasco. Well, you might be surprised to learn that none of those comments came from Volition. In fact, it was Deep Silver who's been running Saints Row Social since before the reboot's announcement. Yo, Deep, Sil Deep Silver hiding behind Volition, bro. Oh my god, dude. And, you know, that did piss off the community at tweet as well as the community manager i don't know if he's gonna get into that but the community manager for saints row um you know they were on some insane stuff you know comparing gamers uh that showed dislike towards the uh new saints Row reboot uh, comparing them to individuals that perform uh acts of terror man absolutely disgusting behavior on her part but uh yo deep silver being the true villain this entire time so yeah that doesn't make the comments any better but for what arguably caused the biggest divide among fans and casual gamers volition shouldn't get all the blame for it and this would be far from the only thing the publisher has done to screw over the studio i wanted to save some of this info for my nda video but screw it for a decent portion of the reboot's development, Johnny Gat, Dex, Shandi, Pierce, and Aisha were all going to be the main saints in the game. Hell, Mike Watson was even- Yo, are you telling me that this project started as a true saints role game, and then they just, they just out of nowhere just ripped all that out? Are you kidding me, dude? Are you kidding me? Yo, this is, this is- Even in terms uh. of making a mission where you would finally kill Dex in a proper fashion. They had the 2080 rule where the game's tone was going to be 20% Saints Row the Third and 80% Saints Row 2. They were going to give us what we wanted. This is exactly what we Saints Row fans freaking wanted. This is why the gaming industry is just so dog shit. The shame is the industry knows what we want but refuses to give it to us. This is yet another example of, of this, this exact issue that we're having. They don't make games for people that they sell game, they want to sell games to, which is absolutely pathetic at this point. How, how is it that you literally knew exactly what we wanted and then we got Saints Row 2022? Pathetic, man. Absolutely pathetic. It pisses me off knowing this.
This would have allowed the game to have occasional over-the-top moments, but still have a grounded story with impactful moments. Volition initially set out to make a game that would satisfy both the old and new school fans. Though as time went on and Deep Silver kept nudging Volition in a new direction, the studio realized their concept wouldn't be compatible with the publisher's vision. So the old saints were scrapped. Yo, Deep Silver is a garbage-ass publisher, man. Absolutely dog shit. Indie baby. The more of these like developers that are and look, man, I, I don't know the financials of it. I'm just a gamer, but you'd figure the more developers can can self-sustain themselves, the more they can connect to their fan base. You know, that that's just basic thought. I don't know the financial situation of what goes into that. I know that it's very, very difficult, especially in modern day, but it these publishers really just Pissing what gamers want and make money off of us. It's sad. The story was changed and we ended up with a bland, corporate, and unsatisfying experience. Now, not to put the blame entirely on Deep Silver, from what previous Volition devs have expressed online and from what I've been told over the last two years, the higher ups of the studio constantly made development problematic. From butchering the combat, cutting countless finished features, and demanding constant changes to the story, it's no wonder that employees were leaving on a weekly basis. At the end of the day, so, in part of Deep Silver, as well as the higher-ups of Volition, yeah, we, we, us Saints Row fans, totally tossed to the side. Um, that, that is so aggravating, man. Absolutely aggravating. The leadership behind Volition, another thing that absolutely pissed, up, pissed off fans was basically the leadership of Volition saying, well, you know, we actually regret our previous games, you know, being the, the games that the fans loved, Saints Row 1, Saints Row 2, they regret having made those games because they don't meet the current social climate criteria, which is pathetic. And that's when I knew personally, when they, when they said that outright, that uh, Saints Row 2022 was not going to be what fans wanted. Because they were too ashamed, too ashamed of their past to give fans what they wanted we can either dwell on volition's final blunders or remember the studio for their decades of beloved games that are still enjoyed even now it's only a shame they were never given the opportunity to redeem themselves it's crazy to think that the same development studio that made the punisher on ps2 was somehow the same development studio that made saints row 2022 it's crazy how things change man from what I was told, the studio had quite a promising future under Gearbox. The entire reboot writing team? Gone. The upper management who's been screwing over the studio since Agents of Mayhem? Gone. Their publisher being based in the States instead of overseas meant more precise communication. No more monthly 50-page reports with demands that overestimated the studio's skill. I even heard that Randy Pitchford wanted to increase the size of the studio so teams could develop multiple games at once. Though sadly, we'll never know what a post-reboot volition could have Wow. So basically a lot of the problems that Volition were dealing with may have been out of the way. I have to wonder what Volition would have made pro like afterwards. Like, would they go back to OG Saints Row, just scrap Saints Row 2022? Um, like that sort of feel and just do what they initially wanted to do to begin with? Yeah, that's um that's definitely an interesting thought. Achieved. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm sorry that this video took so long. A lot of personal nonsense unexpectedly came up, but things have finally settled and content should be picking up soon. And yes, the NDA video is still 100% coming. The little info I shared today is only scratching the surface of what that day entailed, and I'll be doing my best to get the rest told as soon as possible. And before okay. ending today's video... Okay, we do have to keep tabs on that then, because I'm interested to know more. Video, I need to give a super special thanks to my Patreon. So yeah, guys, that's um definitely a lot of interesting thoughts put forth. Um, I really wanted to make a video on this because, well, we've been dying for some answers. We're, it's um it's sad. It's sad, and and I think the reason why I, as well as a lot of the community, were so outspoken about this and and we just didn't give a fuck was because it's hurtful it's hurtful to see 
your favorite one of your favorite um, franchises just be completely and totally bastardized uh, there's tons like a lot of the franchises i personally grew up with and have so much admiration for um the more they're continued the more that the franchise itself is ruined i have a long list that falls into that and also it somehow makes me happy that some of the old franchises that that were left you know ps2 era you know stayed in that era and didn't progress forward to end up being ruined like saints for husband that that's sad that i i feel happy about that in some in some situations but yeah, guys, it seems like uh, Deep Silver is definitely a big proprietor of this issue, Volition's leadership. Um, it seems like maybe they got rid of some of those individuals, and and it's sad that maybe Volition could have ended up doing things that they knew the gamers wanted. It's clear to see that Volition did, in fact, know what we wanted as Saints Row fans. It's just unfortunate that corporate got in the fucking way. And this is the stuff that we're dealing with, guys. Um, if you think that this is just a volition, you know, a situation that's happening, you know, with Deep Silver. No, it's it's across many publishers. And uh, I can't. It's so it's so adherently problematic that I can't even name drop um, a certain. Uh, certain group that apparently writes. Uh, writes stories for some of these games now that make sure that they're sanitized enough to appease. Um, modern day political ideology modern day quote-unquote woke culture but yeah that's where we are with this let me know what you think about this in the comment section down below guys if you can like the video share the video subscribe to the channel follow me over on twitter or kick if you'd like to continue the conversation consider becoming a channel member becoming a channel member gives you instant access to the discord um i do plan on working on some more channel membership videos i kind of just tend to do those when I really feel passionate about something, about talking about something that just wouldn't fit in with the channel. So if you're into that, consider becoming a channel member. It's the Two Real for Feels podcast this Thursday. And yeah, guys, um, with all that being said, I am out. Peace.